Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana, and today I have another Amazon FBA success story to share with you. Today you'll get to meet Christina. Christina is a longtime flight attendant, but due to the pandemic, she was furloughed from her aviation career. And so while the aviation industry was one of the industries that got hit the hardest uh, due to the pandemic, there are certain industries that ended up growing due to the pandemic, and Christina noticed that. And so she looked online, she saw the opportunities of building an online business and specifically an Amazon FBA business. So at 40 years old, she started her Amazon business in the beauty category, and she currently is doing over 100K in revenue per year. And today she's here to share with you her experience. So Christina, thank you so much for taking the time to be here on this channel today. Why don't you get started by just sharing with our audience a bit about yourself and what you were doing uh, before you discovered selling on Amazon. I had actually been a flight attendant for the last um, 12 years with a Canadian airline. And prior to starting on Amazon, I had done that for, as I said, 13 years. Um, so I started in November of roughly 2000 and I think it was 19 or 20. And my business really took off that January or February. That's when I started really realizing that this could be a really great opportunity for me. Wow, amazing. Okay, so you're from uh, Alberta and you've been an, a flight attendant for many, many years. And uh, so what made you decide to um, look online for ways to create passive income or, or an online source of income? I think the reality was I did have a little bit of financial difficulty and I was trying to get myself out of debt. But in addition to that, I really felt as though my whole life I hadn't lived potential. And so even though the money was really enticing, you know, you see a lot of content about like, you know, a lot of money that you can make an opportunity. I think that the underlying tone for me was really living to potential and trying to see if I could actually push myself forward. I think I was cautiously optimistic and Amazon seemed like a really great start because I knew I didn't need to have thousands of dollars to get started. It, it seemed like a really great fit. Um, it was kind of like dipping a toe into the water. You know, uh, for someone who hadn't had any entrepreneurial experience prior. So, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I love that you say that because I felt the exact same way where yeah. I felt like I have this kind of untapped potential within me and I want to see what I can create. You know, I want to yeah. see what I can do. And I felt like, you know, stepping outside of what I was doing and just um, stepping into entrepreneurship was an opportunity to do that because as an entrepreneur, you know, you are responsible for everything and you, you get to create, you get to um, play around with things and try new things. And, um, you know, what you put in is what you get out. And so I knew that if I worked really hard and I invested my time, my resources, my creativity, then it would pay off eventually for me. But it was just exciting, the feeling of like, yeah, like I, I can actually create something really amazing and I want to see what I'm made out of. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the feeling that I had, right? I had really loved my flying career. You know, it was an amazing opportunity, but yeah, it was just it. There was just something missing. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think I realized until I got really well into Amazon how creative I am. And, um, you know, that's a good reminder for people just starting that you don't necessarily have to have the book smarts or anything. You can really just build a business off of creativity, right? Like everyone has different skill sets. So that, that was a really big thing for me was, you know, moving myself to potential and it still is really. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so you got furloughed from your aviation career because of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's right. Yeah. So COVID hit roughly, I guess, March. And initially I thought, okay, it'll be a three month holiday. I was kind of, not that I was excited for a global pandemic by any means, but flying was getting a little bit exhausting. You know, I'm 41 now. Um, so I was kind of thinking, you know, a three month break might be okay. Um, but three months soon, soon turned to a year. So it got pretty lengthy. Um, yeah, so I was furloughed in March and um, have been furloughed ever since. I'm still not back in the air. Okay. And so were you already selling on Amazon before you were furloughed or was that yeah. afterwards? No, I had started in November. And like I said, January is when I kind of started to really realize the magnitude of potential with my beauty brand. Right. And then March, that following March, I was furloughed. 
So that's when I started realizing I needed to kind of do something else to propel my brand forward. Yeah. Right. Well, it's great that you had this backup, you know, because a lot of people, they don't have, you know, something to fall back on um, in in that event. And COVID has definitely been devastating for so many people um, losing their careers or their jobs. And uh, it's great that you had something kind of on the side that you had going that you could then um, dedicate more of your time and energy into to to grow. So how is it, how did you first discover um, selling on Amazon and private labeling Amazon FBA? So as I said, I was looking for, um, I guess, more potential or to see if I could build a business on my own. Mm -hmm. But because I had a little bit of financial difficulty, I was really concerned about how I was going to do that um, without, you know, a substantial amount of capital. So I really just went to Google and YouTube and was like researching content And Amazon at first, I was a little bit concerned. It seemed kind of gimmicky, Um, but the more content I watched, the more I realized that real people were doing this. And um, then it became exciting because they were building brands. And for some reason, rather than just selling products, that really appealed to me, like the idea of building something bigger. Um, So that's kind of how I learned about Amazon. That's great. And so you said it sounded a little bit gimmicky. Did you have any hesitations um, that that were really preventing you from getting started? Did it take you a while to kind of actually commit to starting your business? Or did you quite quickly decide, uh, make that commitment and, and take action? I think that's one good personality trait is that once I made the decision, then I was all in. Like it, it was literally, I made the decision in July and I aligned myself with someone who had had the knowledge to help me. And that was early August. And it just, it continued from that point forward. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's yeah. a really important, I feel like it's a really important uh, trait that can be developed is, is just being yeah. an action taker and being decisive. They say that um, successful people, they're able to make decisions quickly um, because, you know, mm-hmm. I, I remember I used to be so undecisive about everything, even when it came to a restaurant and I couldn't choose what I wanted to eat from the menu. And so I started practicing yeah. just being decisive, practicing, making decisions quickly. Um, and of course you want to do your due diligence and you want to make sure that you are, um, making the best decision you can. But oftentimes if you, you don't make a decision, well, that is a decision. Um, so that's definitely a great quality. Um, to help you actually, you know, take action. So that's great. And then you said you, did you partner with someone? Um, Did you find someone to partner with to start your brand? I didn't partner in business. I had had a local, I guess, acquaintance who had also sold on Amazon and had experience. So that was really appealing to me because, you know, I didn't have, I wouldn't say I necessarily had that classic entrepreneurial mindset, So not only was I lacking a little bit of experience in business, but also in Amazon. So I worked really closely with someone locally one-on-one who basically helped me get to the launch phase. Um, And then by the time I had launched and had my business, then I worked independently. You know, I hired mentors after that. So that's awesome. Yeah. So what were your first steps with getting started? Um, So the very first step, I guess, was just an overall discussion or conversation about what Amazon FBA really was. Mm -hmm. And um, then it really, we we basically moved forward very quickly. The very first thing that we talked about was um, finding a product Mm -hmm. and, you know, a research method to find a product and how how to go about that. And um, I gave myself lots of little time limits. I think that's a really good tip for this active learning. I talk about that a lot is that I set myself like two weeks. By the end of that two week period, I would have a product. So I came up with lots of really, you know, strange (laughs) ideas and unique concepts, but at the end of that two weeks, I had a product, so. That's great. That's great. Yeah. And so then you decided to sell a beauty product in the beauty category. Um, yeah. And did it take you some time to figure out like, you know, where you're going to source the product from um, mm-hmm. making sure that the product, you know, is you're selling in Canada. So making sure that, you know, there's the ingredients are accepted, that it's been, that it's got the, the testing or certificates that is necessary. Was that, was there any challenges with that, with selling in the beauty category? Um, I think, you know, I've, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I think a really big critical mistake that I made was that all the content you watch out there says, you know, really 
reconsider using an electronic to start. And that's what I began selling was an electronic. So there was definitely some challenges in making sure that I had all the safety requirements um, and really understanding what selling electronics could mean. I think that I, you know, unfortunately I over, I probably overestimated what, what that really meant for your business. Um, but yeah, I just, I learned as much as I could through this mentor um, about product selection, um, you know, about doing inspections and all, all of the things that are included in Amazon FBA. Mm -hmm, that's great. And so are you selling one product on Amazon or do you have multiple products within one brand? What's your right. method? So right now I'm still, I'm, I'm almost, at, I'm well over the year and a half mark, but I'm still with a singular product. Um, and yes, the, the goal is to grow the product line, but you know, that's a really big reason why when COVID hit, it was really important for me to pivot so that I could get the capital behind me to really scale the business. Um, in my naive state starting business, I really didn't understand that you really do need a little bit of capital to scale. You know, you don't, you don't need tons of money, but you just need to have enough money to reorder and to think about growth earlier than later. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, you know, I definitely face some similar challenges because to start the business, it doesn't really require much upfront, right. but if your business is successful and it's growing and you have new customers every month, you have more orders every month, you have to place an increasingly larger order with your uh, manufacturer to support future growth. And so it becomes right. challenging when you don't necessarily have the capital right now to pay for that order. So my challenge was I would always order something, a smaller order, and then I would be out of stock. And I really like, refused to take out loans or, or anything like that or because I wanted to just reinvest my profits. And I, I'm glad now that I did and I had really high, great profits doing it that way. But at the same time, in hindsight, I think once I proved my concept, once I proved that, hey, this is selling, you know, this is a success, I think I would have at that point decided, let's see if I can get some help financially, if I can get a loan or mm -hmm. you know, a line of credit so that I can support my larger inventory orders, my marketing expenses, things like that, because it definitely would have helped to grow the business um, quicker, but not only grow the business quicker, but just be less pressure, less stress on myself so that I could afford to maybe hire the people that I need right. and those other bits and pieces in the business that require some capital. So I think all, a lot of entrepreneurs can relate to that for sure. And um, yeah, that it was definitely a factor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I think it's great. Um, you have done, if I'm correct, is $100,000 in sales uh, over the last 12 months. And that's just with one product. And I think that's amazing, because I think sometimes people think more is better. And mm -hmm. to an extent, sure, like if you're building a brand, it's good to have some options for your customers when they go to your website. Because if, you know, if you have products that complement each other, they're either mm -hmm. going to buy it from someone else or buy it from you. So it's good to have things that they can bundle together, increase your average order value. But sometimes um, the misconception is that, oh, I should launch as many products as I can. Um, but it's not, it doesn't always work to your advantage. And it's like, I had over 500 SKUs at one point and it ended up just causing a lot of disorganization in my business. And I ended up having so much inventory that became dead inventory because I spent the money on the inventory, wasn't really looking at the reports, that inventory didn't sell well, the other inventory sold well. And so I discovered, okay, let me just narrow in on like the products that are selling and then D remove the rest, get rid of the other products. And that way I can like invest into the things that are working. It's kind of like that 80, 20 principle. Yeah. I would agree. I think, you know, and for someone in my situation who is maybe struggling a little bit financially, I think one product to start is a really great learning experience as well. So I have no regrets with that. I mean, the goal is still obviously growth. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's a little bit slower than other people, I'm not so concerned on that. I, I'm just really focused on healthy growth. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I think slow and steady. I, I, that's the, my way. Yeah. And I think it's just, um, you know, sometimes it's the better way. So yeah. speaking of, um, of challenges, uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced uh, over the last year with your business and especially, you know, with the pandemic, was there anything um, surprising mm -hmm. that you had to encounter and overcome? 
um, yeah, love to hear. I always love to hear about challenges because that's something that every entrepreneur faces and it's always really helpful for our viewers to learn from other people's mistakes so that they can potentially, right. you know, avoid making some of those in the future. Well, I think when COVID hit, I was a little bit naive in what that impact would really mean for inventory. I was already struggling with going out of stock. That was a really big issue and it still is, um, it's still impacting my business. Um, and so it is extremely challenging, but when COVID hit, my inventory seemed fine, um, but I created a new SKU with a redesign and that new SKU prompted a very heavy um, restriction for inventory quantity. And that's when I started realizing that, you know, my inventory issues weren't actually gonna get better. They were probably gonna get a little bit worse. So I'd say that's like the biggest, um, the biggest challenge that I faced in Amazon. Um, and then the other thing is just mindset. I think that I've sometimes you tend to, well, maybe other people can relate to this, but I'm my own worst enemy and thinking mm -hmm. I can't do things. Um, so really kind of like trying to change that mindset and work on that throughout, you know, the stages of building both of my businesses. Yeah, so. I couldn't agree more. I think that's yeah. absolutely fundamental. I, I, I personally think that, you know, success, 80% of it is, is the mindset and 20% mm -hmm. um, is the mechanics. And it's very easy to just gravitate towards the content on YouTube about how to do this, how to do that, the, the mechanics of it all. But I think it's adopting the mindset of success. That's what's going to help you to push through and persevere beyond the challenges um, because there will be many <laughs> that arise and yeah. it's part of the journey. There's a good book called The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster by Darren Hardy, uh, one of the first books that I read as an entrepreneur. And it's just really a great um, way to describe, you know, the journey of an entrepreneur. It's like, it's never just like this. That's not what success looks like. It's like this and this and this. And so it's this, this roller coaster ride. And when you're on the ride, you're like, you know, you feel like, oh, there's a downfall. Oh, I failed. And then, oh, there's a success. But when you zoom out over the um, and the, when you get a bigger per picture, bigger, a broader perspective, you can see that steady incline. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's part of the journey. And um, so where are you now? I understand that you've started another business. Um, what is that? And, uh, and how's that going? So as I said, when COVID hit, um, reality kind of started creeping in about, you know, not only my inventory issues, but I had been doing what you're talking about, where I was reinvesting the profit. I don't have any loans from my business, either business. Um, so it became really apparent that I needed to scale my beauty brand. I needed more capital. So I was encouraged by a previous mentor to basically pivot. And at the time, I thought that was a crazy idea because once again, I had this kind of self-limiting um, belief system that told me that, you know, I, what, what could I possibly pivot to make an income doing? Um, and so I mentioned to this person that I could write and, you know, her first um, statement to me was, well, what does that mean exactly? So I submitted a sample blog to a paying client. And from that point forward, I've been writing Amazon listings, blog content, and I write for some pretty high level companies within the Amazon FBA space. And I've basically grown a six figure writing business in the last year um, of writing. So that business is what is really helping me push my beauty brand forward. That's amazing. And I'm not, I can't say what the future of my beauty brand will hold because it is challenging. And sometimes it's hard to juggle all things and juggle them well. But um, right now things, I'm just kind of going with the flow of, I guess, what is the best fit for me? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that. I love that. You didn't just give up. Um, you decided, okay, let me find a, a new way. What other skills do I have that I could utilize um, and create an income source uh, from that? And you're great at writing. So that worked out really well for you. And now you can fund and support the growth of your e-commerce business. And exactly. uh, I think that's, yeah, that's the way to go. So congratulations with that. Thank you. <laughs> so um, are you doing now, you're doing this full-time, I'm assuming? Copywriting? Yep, it's a full-time business. I have year-long contracts now. Um, initially, I wasn't really self-promoting. I was working under mentorship and working under referrals, which was a really great opportunity. I feel really fortunate for that experience. But come the new year, I started really promoting myself on my own. And I'd say 99% of my business is from Instagram. Um, and so I basically have propelled my own business forward completely independent as of January this year. So yeah, it's totally full time. I hire um, staff, you know, my goal now, it's not just freelancing, it's to hopefully grow 
um, a writing agency. That's really what I see for myself. That's fantastic. Yeah. So um, Instagram has been really useful for your marketing, for your copywriting. Um, yeah. Have you leveraged that for your beauty brand um, or what kind of marketing are you doing for your e-commerce business? Right. So Instagram is everything for my beauty brand and also um, nano influencing. I've been really fortunate locally to meet some really amazing um, women who've helped support my business. And even, even small things, I know people talk about influencing kind of in a larger sense of, you know, buying influencing, but I really focus influencing on building relationships. And I was really fortunate that those relationships, some of those people became, you know, friends. Um, and these are people with really, really large accounts who got a hold of my product, demoed my product on their own social media. And um, my business blew up because of those experiences. So influencing Instagram, completely um, a huge factor of my beauty brand for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I, I'm a huge believer in leveraging social media. Um, it's easy to just be a consumer of social media, but as a business owner, wow, it can really work some magic. A lot yeah. of business owners aren't uh, taking advantage of that. So um, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there, especially with these influencers, because there's so many women and, and men who, who want to make a living being an influencer and are super excited to receive your product, try your product, promote your product. Um, and it's very easy to develop those relationships and it's fun and it's a really great way to um, not only offer marketing for your product, get that the extra marketing, but also content. It helps you get, people always ask me like, oh, I don't know what to post on my social media for my product, my brand product. But it's like, well, you could have influencers create content for you and then you can repost it on your social media or post it on your website or use it in your blog and you can really recycle content and it becomes very useful that way. Yes, I agree. Content is everything. And it, it just reminds me a little bit about me and both of my business journeys because I always was a little bit insecure about content, thinking like my writing's not good enough or no one wants to see a photo of me. But the truth is, is that people are interested in people. Yeah. So once you make that connection and start putting content out there, repurposing that content, you know, that can be a really substantial marketing plan for your e-commerce business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. So how is life uh, different now than when you were uh, doing your um, full-time aviation career? How are things mm -hmm. different now? Life is so different. It's yeah. so crazy to see where I've um, come in the last, you know, one to two years. Um, I'm not flying right now, obviously, I'm still furloughed, but, you know, I've moved um, to a considerable nicer condo. Um, I'm working full time, basically, in both of my e-commerce businesses, you know, five, six days a week. And life is just a little bit easier. It's not that it's about perfect, but it's just a little bit easier. And now I have the confidence that I know no matter what, I'll figure something out. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the biggest lesson in both of these businesses is just at the end of the day, once you start learning and um, kind of practicing these skills and being an active learner, you start building that confidence and realizing that you're really capable of far more than you've told yourself, I guess. So yeah, I feel like life is good and I'm excited for the future still. I love that. I love that you said that. I think that's so true. I think sometimes when we are kind of stuck in the same career for five, 10 years, you know, you're same, you're kind of doing the same thing every single day. And in some ways you can start to lose a little bit of confidence in yourself and in what you're capable of, because you're not exploring other skills or talents. You're kind of, because you're doing the same thing every day, but once you step outside of that bubble and you get a little bit more adventurous um, and you start, you know, your, for example, entrepreneurship journey, you really discover that, yeah, I'm capable of, of so much more and whatever I set my mind to, I can create. And that confidence that you get after you create some initial success, you can carry that forward to create more success in any area. Because like you said, like now, you know, you know, you, you're, you're confident that whatever it is that you want to do, you can create. And I feel the same way that even if everything was taken away from me today, for whatever reason, if I lost, 
you know, my, all my social media, everything that I've built, my e-commerce business, I'm very confident that I could rebuild it and probably rebuild it a lot better with all of that experience. The experience is something that nobody can take away. Um, and that's, um, it's something that you just, you can't gain from a textbook. It's something you can only gain from doing and taking action and making mistakes. That's part of gaining experience is making those mistakes and learning from them. So yeah. as we wrap up, is there anything that you would like to share with our audience here today? A lot of the people who are watching this are maybe considering starting an e-commerce business. Maybe they've been watching my videos for a while now and kind of are on the fence, maybe a little bit intimidated, um, uncertain about it. Um, is there any advice or um, anything that you would like to share with them um, on their journey? I think it's two things for me is that at any age, you can restart and you can really focus on any of your interests. Um, it's never really too late. Um, I really think that it's just about when you're ready. But I also think, you know, I talk a lot, even in my own social media about active learning. When you finally make that decision, just take that step forward as scary as it is. And, you know, as uncertain as it is, those can be some of the best experiences. So just take that step forward um, and know that you'll be okay. Like you will figure things out. You'll learn resilience. You'll, you'll learn resourcefulness. You'll learn all of those things as you go. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Christina, for your time today. Really appreciate it. Um, and we will link your, your Instagrams uh, down below. So if anyone wants to check you out, um, check out your copywriting, your brand, that will be linked below. Um, and yeah, this was great. And uh, thank you so much to everyone who is watching as well. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section. Otherwise, we will see you next time. Thank you.